Can you tell me a little bit about the Pine Board project? I know a lot of people built that. Uh, I followed every every episode, every installment on Ham Nation about uh, the Pine Board project. For those that have never heard of it, maybe you can give us a rundown what that was all about. I love to build, and I, uh, Ham Nation was something. I was I started that with Leo Laporte. Leo tapped me to to do that. He said we need to have something to talk about ham radio and you know the rest of the history. And um, in 2018, I wanted to, to build. And so I started off by building a little field strength meter, if you remember, I a meter out of my, one of my ICO parts rigs. And uh, oh boy, my email loaded up. I was on track. These guys do want to build. And so that's what started the inimitable pine board project but how i got there was interesting every morning at nine o'clock since you gosh back in 2006 maybe there's a bunch of us that get on 3885 i'm the furthest east here just outside of st louis all the way into kansas I was all the way through missouri arkansas sometimes there's 15 or 16 of us all on a.m and this one guy, he's a retired television engineer. He builds all kinds of stuff, crazy stuff. And he, he came on the air one day and he said, I don't know if you guys can all hear me. I'm running five watts on a piece of pine board. I said, do what? <laughs> this intrigued me. So I went to visit him, Richard. And he was out near Columbia, Missouri, retires. And I just went freako. <laughs> that's what got me going with the pine board w0 bvt that was his little first transmitter and it, one i'm wrong it wasn't five it was two watts it was 12 ax7 and uh, and then he modulated it with a little uh mixer of behringer or whatever and I thought, oh, my gosh. And I went to see this, and he had all kinds of things. He had a pair of 813s on pine board with a 3,000-volt power supply. He said, now, listen, you stay away from here. And I don't touch it. <laughs> he said, I know where the hot spots are, but maybe you don't. But here, we're going to put it on the air. And he did. Crazy. But <laughs> I got all kinds of pictures of that. But that's what started me with the pine board. And... Uh, I did the first show and it, I had drawn some stuff on a whiteboard. It was terrible. I'm very bad at the drawing. I get a letter from Gene W4IQM. He used to be a graphic artist. Uh, he retired at General Motors and he sent me a drawing and I flipped out. His drawings were better than the Heathkit drawings. You don't even need the schematic. You just put it together just like you see it. That's what happened. But um, at that time, the ARRL, whom I'm not a fan of, uh, they had a great happening. A new CEO came about. He was an old broadcast engineer. And he had been watching Ham Nation more than any of them do. They Because they hate me at the league because I talk about them. I talk about them in a positive manner, but I also let them know that they need to be listening and they aren't. And uh, this one uh, guy, Tom Gallagher, he calls me on the phone one Sunday. He got my home phone number from somebody. He said, this project you got going and I'm watching. He said, we got to do something with that. And I said, well, what are we talking about doing? He said, we got to put that in a magazine and we got to make people know that they can do this. And so that's how that came about. The only thing is the rest of the crew there were going to make it hard on me. We can't publish that. I said, why not? Well, uh, it has to be type accepted. I said, what are you talking about? Oh, yeah. He said, we have to. Oh, well, I can't ship it there. I mean, I didn't build this to bounce around in a UPS truck and be in pieces. Well, I'm sorry. We won't be able to take it. One of the guys in that morning group is retired from the Army as a certification engineer. That's all he did for 25 years. From uh, He was in all the big wars. He was in Vietnam, Korea. It, uh, I, got, I said, hey, I want to talk to you. So I called him. I said, 
could you certify this? He said, well, hell yeah, I got all the equipment, man. He's got thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gear. And so we did. We ran that baby up and it was, it, it, they said, you got to be at least uh, 30 to 35 dB down on the third harmonic. We were 45 down. We couldn't, believe it. we couldn't believe it. We it was so crazy that Ed, the engineer, he said, "Wait a minute, I got it." He pulled out another spectrum analyzer. He said, "I don't believe this," and we spec'd it, and sure enough, it was. So I took a picture of it. I called the guys at the lab. I said, "Check your email. Is that good enough?" And then he gave his certification number and title. I said, "You want to argue with this?" Well, no, it's all we can do because that's the same gear that we use, the same spectrum analyzer. They're, they just didn't want to do it. Well, they did because Tom Gallagher said print it. And that's how it got into QST. It's really fun. I um, uh, a guy built one in a cigar box. <laughs> Another guy took an old uh, guitar amplifier chassis. I didn't want to do it in metal because then we have a whole new deal. And I was happy to keep it on pine board. But one built it in a punch box for his kid. <laughs> and then I had to get, I have to tell him about the AM window. A lot of people do not know about the AM window. And the league will not certify that they did for years back when it started. Because I was there in the 50s. <clears throat> they had wars. There was a guy from Paducah. A big AMer, and this guy, a new sidebander, came flying on his frequency every night, just aggravating the hell out of him. Finally, one day, he took a shotgun, he went down to Tennessee, and he knocked on this guy's door. He said, I want to talk to you. Nobody got hurt, but it got the attention of this sideband guy. And and they uh, they sat down, and, and then there were about 10 or 12 guys all got together, called it a gentleman's agreement, and that's what they set up. And for many years, it stayed. Even the league would promote it, but not anymore. And so it's another, there's another war. I, I didn't even get on last night because there were two sidebanders right in the middle of it. They know what they're doing. Because, see, they can go anywhere. they got a VFO. A lot right. of us are crystal controlled. Well, it's a long, long tradition in AM too, having a 3885 rock plugged into the back of your DX60 or wherever you can't get to it easily. You might have a VFO as well, but for AM, you just flip the switch over to your 3885 and go. That's right. That's right. Yeah, but that's how all that went down. Well, fun project. How many do you think were made ultimately? We know there are over a thousand and still going. And you're going to ask me how I know that <clears throat> because shortly after I had... Oh, I've always been buying parts from Antique Electric Supply. And I was talking to Scott one day about this thing. And he said, well, why don't you send me parts list? And so they put kits together. You call Antique Electric Supply and you get a pine board power supply, pine board mic equalizer, and a pine board final. They have wow. most of the parts. What they don't have, you can buy at MFJ. I love Martin. We're good friends. One of them is the coil, the final coil. And... uh, uh what we use in that is the coil from a, uh, their 811, and that works really good. And uh, I finally ended up, <clears throat> uh, after a year or two, I said, we'd cut that coil in half. As you can see, we only needed it for 40 and 80. And that clip lead, you see, that was our band switch. <laughs> you know, which right. I use the whole coil. And I tap it at 40 and 75 and 160. I have a band switch and it switches three crystals and the taps. And it's 160, 75, and 40. Wow. And it works great. So do you have a lot of regulars that you, uh, you're able to get on on, uh, on those three bands on AM? Yeah, we do a thing each Monday. Uh, first Monday of the month, we call it the peanut whistle net. Nobody runs more than 10 watts. And we're always amazed, I especially, how little power it takes. You don't need a thousand watts. If it's the right equalizer, you know how to use the microphone, you know how to talk in it, all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, we have fun on the peanut whistle net. They're fun. <laughs> 